I want to greet those of you who have just joined us by Facebook or YouTube or wherever you may be. Uh, trust that the lesson will be a blessing and encouragement to you. We're back in Ephesians chapter 6, and hopefully my intention is to complete this study of the book of Ephesians this evening, and uh, next week, Lord willing, and if I can get all my ducks in a row, uh, I intend to start a new series on Bible doctrines. This, is, this comes through the courtesy of Cherith Bible Institute, and uh, I hope to be able to be ready to get started with that. My intention is, and again, don't hold me to this, my intention is to uh, pass out answer sheets to everybody, and as I go through the lesson, you can uh, fill out the answers. I don't want to see the papers afterwards. This is not a test. This is something for your own benefit. And perhaps as we do this, you could get yourself a, a loose leaf binder of some sort and keep the, uh, keep the uh, material in that for future reference. I think that would be a, a worthwhile exercise. I really do. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not quite ready, but I hope to be ready by next week. And uh, so without further ado, we've only got about 15 minutes here, so I'm going to have to talk fast so you listen fast, okay? Uh, we are wrapping up uh, Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, we, have, we have talked about the Christian life being a battle from start to finish, and it is. From beginning to end, the Christian life is a constant battle. There's nothing easy about it. We have, we have some enemies. The number one enemy that we face every day is Satan. Now, he may appear to you in the form of some, somebody else. It may be yourself. You may be the number one enemy, but behind it all is Satan. Uh, so just remember that. When you get been out of shape at somebody when they say something you don't like just remember don't take it out on them satan is the orchestrator of 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 what's going on so the enemy is satan we've talked about that in this chapter or in this book then he provides us equipment for the fight what's that equipment it's the whole armor of god we've been talking about that for weeks now he's provided us with the uh with the truth, the truth is this book. Amen. It's this book. The Bible does not contain the gospel. The Bible is the gospel. It is the gospel. And uh, we need to know what's in that, in that word so that we can stand firm and stand strong and battle the elements and battle Satan. Uh, we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Then he provides one of the other, one of the uh, pieces of equipment that he provides us in addition to the truth is the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. Then the gospel shoes. He mentions shoes of the gospel in verse uh, 15. We've talked about this, so I'm not going to go back and spend a lot of time. He provides us with the shield of faith. He provides us with the helmet of salvation and with the sword of the spirit. We've covered all that. Now we come to verse 18 and we, our attention is called to the fact that although we have all the necessary pieces of equipment, we need some energy for the fight. We need the energy to use the tools that God has given us. Where do we get that energy? Verse 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds. That was Paul speaking. He was a prisoner that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak but that you also may know my affairs and how I do, Tychicus, 
a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things whom I have sent to you for the same purpose that you might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with them all that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Energy for the fight. Prayer is the energy is that, that enables the Christian soldier to wear and use the armor. And also to carry the sword. Prayer. Not, uh, not, we're not to always be saying prayers, but we are to be in an attitude of prayer. Uh, words are one thing, but a, a heart with an attitude of prayer is something else altogether. Jesus said we're not to be heard for our much speaking. Much speaking. Uh, we're told in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 that we are to pray without ceasing. Uh, always to be in communion with the Lord. Uh, we, when we pray generally, and, and I'm guilty of this too, uh, say, Lord, as I come into your presence, well, you know, think about this. We should never leave his presence. We, Lord, as I remain in your presence, Lord, I'm here in your presence. Uh, I got something else I want to say to you. Uh, always be ready for Satan's surprise attacks. Believe me. Uh, Satan is lurking right around the corner, waiting to stir up trouble, waiting to do something to get you off the, off the, the track that God has you running on. Satan is busy all the time. Uh, I think a good prayer, and I try to I try to remember this. Sometimes I get in a get in a sweat, and the phone rings, and I have to go somewhere in a hurry, and I forget to do this, and usually get in trouble when I do. But uh, a good prayer to start the day with is, Lord, help me today to be ready for whatever Satan puts in front of me. Would that be a good way to start the day? Help me today to be ready when Satan attacks, and he will attack. Verse 18 says that we're to pray with all prayer. The Christian who prays only to ask for things is missing out on blessings. Thank God for all his blessings. Thank him. Don't forget to thank God. Before we begin to ask for all the things that we ask for, thank God for what he's already given us. Thank you for your position in Christ. Were it not for him, you wouldn't sit here tonight saved on the way to heaven with the assurance that all is well. If it were not for the truth of God's word, you wouldn't have that assurance. Thank God for it. Thank God for your health. Now, some of us, uh, some of us may lack, be lacking some in our in our health, but thank God for what you have. If you're here, that means you're able. You're upright. You're able to get out. Uh, no, we don't feel good. A lot of times, we don't feel good, and we have issues that that need to be dealt with, but thank God for the health that God has given us. I mean, by rights, I should be dead and in heaven by now, but, but he's chosen to let me stay here for a while, and uh, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful every day, and believe me, it's, it's not something that I pass off lightly. I'm thankful for the years that he has given me and has blessed me with good health. I've never had but one or two life-threatening situations, but uh, uh, thank God I'm here. Thank God for your family, your, your spouse, your children, your parents. So many things that God has given us to be thankful for before we start asking for stuff. Think about that. Uh, Material blessings. 
Thank God for the house you live in. Thank God for the car that you drive. Thank God for the water that comes out of the spigot. Thank God for the, the electricity that makes the light burn when you flip the switch. There's so, so, so much to be thankful for. The food that we eat, uh, everything comes from God. And we forget it. We just accept it as part of life. That's the way it's supposed to be. We think, no, it's not the way it's supposed to be. That's the way God made it. And I'm thankful for that. Then intercession for other people can bring great victory in our own lives. Praying for other people gets your mind off your troubles. Amen? We get so submerged in our own misery sometimes that we forget there are other people who are far worse off than we are. We need to pray for them. Focus. Focus on folks who have greater needs than ours and pray for them. Then we're told also in verse 18 to pray in the Spirit, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. The Bible formula for prayer goes like this. We're to pray to the Father. We're to pray through the Son. And we don't have direct access to God the Father. But Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, became our mediator. And the Bible says there's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. We're to pray to God the Father, through the Son, and in the Spirit. In the Spirit. Let's look at that for just a moment. In, in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. The Bible says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities or our weaknesses, our weaknesses. The Spirit helpeth our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Have you ever knelt down to pray or you bowed your head and there was a heavy burden on your heart but you didn't know how to pray? You just didn't know how to address God. Yeah, that happens quite often. There are so, there, there, there's such a burden. I don't know how to approach God but the my consolation and your consolation should be the Spirit knows our weaknesses and He helps us through those weaknesses. We don't know what we should pray for as we should, but the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, we don't need words. He knows your heart. He knows your heart. And uh, He can take the thoughts and the intents of your burdened heart just lift those prayers out of there and meet the needs according to his will you know a person can pray very fervently and maybe loud and uh, not amount to very much I've heard people just really get ramped up just on and on and on and raise their voice like they're shouting to God. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't amount to very much, but you can pray very quietly in the spirit and see tremendous results. The privacy of your bedroom, the privacy of your closet. I think some of the greatest people in the world you have never heard of. You don't know their name. They're great prayer warriors. Many women, many men that you've never heard the name, maybe the greatest prayer warriors that anybody could know. The uh, Bible says that we are to pray with our eyes open, praying always with all prayer and supplication, and watching. It's hard to, 
hard to watch with our eyes closed. He's talking here about your spiritual eyes. Watch and pray with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Uh, it simply means to watch and pray simply means to keep on the alert. Be aware of what's going on around you. Be alert to the tricks of Satan. Watching and praying is the secret of victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he had asked his disciples to to pray for him while he was there. He said, pray. And when he came back, he found him asleep. And he said, could you not watch for me one hour? Could you not just stay, stay alert for one hour? Just an hour. Just, just, you know. Peter went to sleep when he should have been praying. The result was victory for Satan. God expects us to use our God-given senses, which are led by the Spirit so that we can detect Satan when he begins to work. We need to understand. And he tells us in verse 18 again that we are to keep on praying. Pray with perseverance. To stick it out. Don't quit. Uh, there are several verses in Acts. I'll, I'll, I'll give you these. I'm not going to take the time to go there. But Acts 1.14, Acts 2.42, Acts uh, 6.4 talks about persistence in prayer don't give up don't give up uh, we should the, the early believers prayed that way uh, we should pray I think as they did rejoicing in uh, Romans 12 12 says rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer or consistently in prayer doesn't mean that we're trying to twist God's arm. I mean, that's foolish to even think we could twist God's arm. That can't happen. But it means that you're deeply burdened. And you can't rest until you hear from God. Uh, remember back in uh, Genesis chapter 32 and uh, verses 24 through 26 where Jacob wrestled with the angel. Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I'll not let you go, unless you bless me. I think that's the... That's the kind of prayer he's talking about. Get a hold of the horns of the altar. Lord, hear me. I'm your child. Lord, I was born again. You have a record of my birth. It's written down in glory. Look it up. It's me. And I'm calling on you. I need help. I need help. And he'll hear that prayer. And I believe he'll answer that prayer. Uh, most of us quit praying just before God gives the victory we pray and we pray and nothing happens we don't, we're not getting an answer to prayer so we just, we just kind of wilt and we give up and we forget about it when God perhaps was just about ready to give you what you asked for you ever think about that? I believe that's what I believe that's God. Uh, now maybe you can't pray all night, but uh, I believe we can persevere more than more than we do. I thought of a song when I was preparing these remarks. I thought of a song that I've uh, I don't know if I've ever sang it or not, but I've heard it several times. The name of it is just keep on praying. Pray when the storm clouds gather overhead, hiding the light from you, filling your soul with darkness and dread. 
pray till the light breaks through. And then pressed under sorrow, next to despair, troubles your soul pursue. Go to your father, tell him your care. Pray till the light breaks through. Pray then, believing God on the throne, looks with compassion true, and to his children cares for his own. Pray till the light breaks through. And the chorus goes, just keep on praying till the light breaks through. The Lord will answer, will answer you. God keeps his promise, his word is true. Just keep on praying till the light breaks through. I think that's a good song. Good song. Uh, the Lord's Prayer. My time is gone, so I'm going to going to wrap this up real quick. Just remember, the Lord's Prayer does not begin with my Father. It begins with our Father. Yeah. Our Father. We pray. We pray as part of a great family that's also talking to God. We should pray for other members of the family. You see, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a tendency to pray for those in our little immediate circle. My, my, fam my spouse, my children, my grandchildren, and just these select few. No, you're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We're brothers and sisters. We have an obligation to pray for one another. Uh, Paul asked for the prayers of the Ephesians, not for not for his own comfort or safety, but for the effectiveness of his ministry. That's what Paul was praying for. He said, uh, verse 19, he's talking about praying, and, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul didn't mention one thing about his physical condition. He was praying for his ministry that God would give him the ability to preach and spread the word throughout. Uh, he was praying for every person who preaches and teaches the gospel of grace. And then finally, we've talked about the energy. It's prayer. How about the encouragement? Verses 21 through 24. Uh, that you should also know my affairs, how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister and Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent to you for the same purpose that you might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. We're not fighting the battle alone. Other believers stand with us. We should encourage one another. Paul encouraged the Ephesians. Tychicus encouraged Paul in Acts 20 and verse 4. Paul sent Tychicus to, Eph to Ephesus to encourage them. It is an encouragement to be a part of the family of God. Believers are not isolated. You're not alone. I'm not alone. Christians are not Christians are like sheep. They flock together, right? Christians have a tendency to flock together. Uh, the church is an army, and the soldiers need to stand together and fight together, and that's us. That's this church. Some people's ministry is that of an encourager. Paul was. You think you don't have a ministry? You think you can't preach or sing or teach? You can be an encourager. And if you can't be an encourager, don't be a discourager. We have some discouragers too. Don't be that. Encourage. Paul's closing remarks, he said, peace, love, faith. From God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bear in mind, Paul was a Roman prisoner when he wrote this. Yet he was richer than the emperor. Paul was rich, and he knew it. No matter what your circumstances, in Christ you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Why don't you claim your riches in Christ? 
we have a tendency to be subdued. How are you feeling? Uh, not too good. How are you feeling? Great. Great. I got up this morning. I ate breakfast. I went out today. I'm feeling great. How am I feeling great? Why am I feeling great? Because I have all the blessings that God can bestow upon me. What more can I ask? I'd like to see more attitudes like that. And, uh, you know, when, when I fall on my face or when I fall on my elbow or my hip or wherever I fall, just pick me up. <laughs> Help me to get where I need to go. I'll be fine, but I'm still blessed. I'm blessed just to know the Lord and to have his promises. Amen. Let's stand together.